So Paul Ryan took to the floor yesterday of Congress and ripped into the UN for uh, doing a vanilla resolution, a toothless resolution, saying, hey, you guys should probably stop doing illegal settlements. So the vote was 342 to 80 to condemn the UN over the resolution. And let me tell you a little bit here of what Paul Ryan said in his speech. He said, This UN Security Council resolution was not about settlements, and it certainly was not about peace. It was about one thing and one thing only, Israel's right to exist as a Jewish democratic state. Now, perhaps the saddest fact in this whole debacle is that over a hundred Democrats sided with the Republicans on this. And um, I want to give you what New York Representative Elliot Engel, the top Democrat on the House uh, Foreign Affairs Committee, said during the debate over the resolutions. He argued, The Security Council resolution is highly critical of Israel, yet asks nothing directly of the Palestinians. That's biased. That's unfair. That's not balanced. And again, we should have opposed it. We should have vetoed it. Yeah. Um, hey, asshole. The reason why it's not asking anything of the Palestinians is that they don't have illegal settlements on Israeli land. <laughs> It's the Israelis that have illegal settlements on Palestinian land. What the fuck? How can you do a, a false equivalence in this situation? <laughs> like, it's not... It, it, oh, Netanyahu is screaming it from the fucking rooftops. The papers are reporting on it endlessly, to their credit. Where they say, yeah, no, in response to what the UN did, Netanyahu spit in the international community's eye again, and they said, oh, okay, that's nice, so we're going to build even more settlements thousands more settlements. Now, it's not a question. It's not up in the air. It's not like, whoa, ooh, I don't know. Is it illegal? Is it not illegal? No, we know anything past the 67 borders where Israel builds, and they've been building for a long, long time now, well, that's, uh, that's illegal under international law, and they're not allowed to do it, but they keep doing it. So, but these guys come out there, they're clutching their pearls like, oh! How dare you say that something that is obviously illegal is illegal, and how dare you do a toothless resolution against it? They should do way more than a toothless resolution. You know what the vote was? 14 to 0. <laughs> they act like it was a close one. Oh, it was really close, let me tell you. It was anywhere near close because it's obvious to anybody who's not up their own ass and buying their own propaganda and their bullshit. And that's what's happening here is you have, I don't, like, I don't know. What is it? What is it that makes such a large number of, of politicians in the U.S. lose their fucking mind over Israel, where just all logic is out the window, all reason is out the window, and they just pretend like this perpetual victim complex that Israel has. These guys, people made arguments in the context of this debate, where they said, yeah, no, if you support BDS, boycotts, divestments, and sanctions to try to force Israel to make a deal, which is what worked in apartheid South Africa, they say, oh, no, if you support that, well, you're anti-Semitic. Hillary Clinton made that argument when she was running for president. I mean, that is such a hacky, nonsensical, garbage thing to say. That's like saying, if you opposed uh, the white government in apartheid South Africa that forced uh, segregation on the black people, well, you know, you're, uh, you hate all white people. You hate all white people if you're against apartheid in South Africa. No, I'm against apartheid in South Africa. <laughs> That, that's what I'm against. I'm against illegal occupation. I'm against more settlements. I'm against the right-wing government in Israel and Netanyahu and his fucking bomb fests in Gaza, which kill minimum 80% civilians. That's what I'm against. But no, they flipped the victim narrative. They, this is biased because you're only calling out Israel. What do you want me to do? Call out the Palestinian settlements that don't exist? Okay, so... This, this is embarrassing for the United States. That's the whole point of me doing this segment is... The rest of the world looks at something like this, where 342 to 80 the vote is to condemn the UN over the most banal, obvious resolution ever. People look at that like, oh, uh, you guys are the bad guy. And on this front, they're totally right. You guys are the bad guy. You're, like, you're not even engaging with what the argument is. None of you can actually go on the floor of Congress and say... Hey, I'm pro, uh, I'm in favor of illegal settlements, and I'm in favor of more land grabs and theft. 
and I'm in favor of apartheid and occupation and oppressing the Palestinians and, you know, getting them off their own land and ethnic cleansing. None of you can say that because that'd be so gross. So what you do is you come up with bullshit arguments. So you're obfuscating and you're deflecting from the issue at hand. And it looks to the rest of the world, because it might be the case, that it's all just a cover for the same United States mentality that we've seen post-World War II of when we do it and when our allies do it, it's okay. When you do it, you're a terrorist. I mean, that's the mantra. That's the mindset. Vietnam? Oh, we kill over a million civilians? What are you going to do? We meant well. We had good intentions, so fuck off. The deaths in Cambodia? What are you going to do? What? How we fucking ravaged South America and toppled democratic governments and put in fascist puppets that serve U.S. corporations. How we toppled the government in Iran because, God forbid, uh, Mossadegh wanted to take the oil that the U.S. and Britain were jacking and say, let's enrich our own people because these are our resources. So we toppled them. We had to get rid of them. So, you know, it's that, those kinds of actions from the U.S. that you can't just come out and say, yeah, that's what we're doing. So you got to deflect and you got to obfuscate and you got to pretend like that's not what you're doing. And you got to come up with these bullshit arguments to defend yourself and defend your allies and defend Saudi Arabia, one of our best fucking friends. And they're all atheists or terrorist policy and behead people for drug smuggling and apostasy and witchcraft and just the most ridiculous things ever and treat women as second class citizens. And But it, it's our guys, so when we do it, it's okay. But the thing that's scary is I feel like they've started to believe their own bullshit. 342 to 80. 342 to 80 is the vote. To say, fuck you, international community. Um, illegal settlements are not illegal when we say they're not illegal. We must reaffirm our relationship with Israel and letting them do whatever the fuck they want. And they ranted, oh, Obama's so anti-Israel. He just gave them $38 billion, and they use a lot of that money to turn around and continue expansion, because a lot of that's military aid. He gave them Iron Dome to knock Hamas rockets out of the sky. So the bar has moved so far to the right, and we're now so extreme on Israel that you can't even state the obvious without them maligning you as an anti-Semite. 